good evening friends so today what i would like to discuss in ssis is a very special property which enables uh, your ssis package to uh, process at the optimum level that is uh, many times we have uh, threads which can enable you process things parallelly and uh, you we have processes which can optimize your ssis package further with the help of parallel processing uh, ability so i would like uh, to do a small poc and show you what uh, how we can achieve parallel processing in ssis packages so basically let's see what i have already uh, done and the scripts that i have created at uh, in the sql server uh, sql server db uh, uh, sample db i have created two tables a simple one is a log log time table for uh, keeping the logging the execution that we are trying to uh, achieve here and a process table which will populate data these two tables uh, have the schema as shown and what i do is first of all uh, let's insert four records in our log time table these are the type of uh, processing that we will be undergoing so let's insert these four records so we have four records here let's have a look at it it's we have four ids so first we will go with the poc of system control parallel processing then system control sequential user control parallel and user control sequential flow so that's uh, this table the process table will be populated during the process of the execution presently there aren't any records so we'll be having uh, this now let's look at uh, at the ssis package what we have done with it so for the ssis package what we have done is uh, this uh, would actually connect to the sample db and would actually update the start time based upon the kind of processing we are doing here like this is for your system control uh, system control parallel processing that is the default uh, parallel processing so it will update the start and the start time for this and this similarly will update the end time of th of the process next let's see i have created a, a, a sequence container containing 10 sql tasks and uh, these sql tasks are nothing but insertion scripts they will simply uh, insert around uh, 20000 records into the process table with the process id i mean process description as one and the and the date and time when the insertion occurs so this is for process 1 similarly i have created all these scripts this is for process 2 similarly for all these corresponding the respective processes will be shown so that we can understand if the pro if the insertion has occurred parallelly or not so let's begin with the important thing that i want to uh, point out is during the parallel processing uh, there are few things that uh, parallel processing enables i mean your system enables so you have the disk io which you cannot control um, by and large then you have the cpu and the available memory that is your ram so ram and cpu are very and depending upon your system and the kind of server you are hosting on uh, uh, i mean your integration services are running on it will be uh, you can actually run and see what are uh, what can give you the optimum performances so it depends it varies from processor to processor and the uh, and the availability of rams uh, uh, so now for now we'll just be running uh, this on the default uh, system control parallel processing by which we mean in ssis there is a special property when you click on the properties of your ssis package you will see something called max concurrent executables which is by default for any package set to minus one that is the system has the liberty to ch uh, i mean uh, what uh, to achieve the optimum number of threads it can run in parallel so uh, we let's keep it as to the default value and uh, run this package so i'm starting uh, to run the package so we can see it the system has identified six parallel threads that it can run parallelly so all these six threads are running in parallel while the other four threads are still waiting for these six to complete as each of them complete it will be transferred i mean uh, the other will take over and start processing so as we can see the same thing is happening so yeah our uh, package has completed execution so 
we can see for the system uh, what uh, what amount of time it has taken so let's just see the amount of time taken is 19 seconds precisely for system control parallel processing it has taken 19 seconds so next we'll move on to uh, system control sequential uh, that is when we say that system we link each of them and so the process will not occur parallelly but rather sequentially so we connect each of the sequel tasks with the next one and create a flow we have done that okay next uh, we'll just edit the script for, uh, for logging the start and the end time to id value of 2 so let's update the end time as well and we are done right before that just let's take a look at the contents of the process table just to check if the parallel processing has occurred yeah we can see that the parallel processing has occurred it has inserted to one processes in parallel so that's fine with us let's truncate this table we are good so now let's begin our processing of the system control sequential as you can see each of uh, each uh, one task will be executed at one time so we'll just try to see how much time does this take and we are using 20,000 uh, records for each of the processes so that we can identify a good amount of uh, what is the optimum value that can be achieved on this system to execute any task parallelly so let's uh, just see the execution and observe right so our process is completed now let's just see the amount of time this process has taken it has taken uh, compared to the system control parallel it has taken 58 seconds which is not even uh, it's not even like double it's more than that so as you can see if you, if you go with sequential you are actually losing on a lot of lot of time next uh, we i want to show is how can I control, I as a user control the processing and how will that help. So first thing what I do is I simply delete uh, this dependency of sequential processing and I simply delete this. I want these threads to run in parallel. So I delete all the right so as you can see I'm done next is we'll just update the start and the end time logging to next let's truncate the process table meanwhile if you want to have a look at the process table we can do that as well so it, it's just a sequential insertion of data so let's just truncate this table we should be good okay 
next the important point here is before starting as an user i want to see i want to have the control so what i do is from minus one the important thing is i want all the 10 threads to be running in parallel in this in one go so i put it as 10 i put the property max concurrent executables as 10 and then i start my processing let's start as you can see all the 10 threads will be running in one go in parallel so they will start inserting the records in parallel and it will be executing at the same time we can see that the execution is occurring at the same time let's see uh, what is the time I mean it gives us right so it's complete we monitor the time it's around 22 seconds so I see if I if I control uh, this threads maybe that's not uh, till now we have seen the system control parallel that is six threads running in parallel gives us the optimum kind of uh, execution so although that's not always true system control parallel thing we at times uh, you can as a user control and get, get better results so anyways next we move on to uh, observation of user control sequential and try and get if I go with sequential is it better to go with the system one or as a user one so I just go with the fourth scenario four and I say okay four I say okay and then I do nothing but truncate well if you wanna have a look you can do that it's it's just a parallel insertion of data it's just parallel insertion of data it's simply in between okay so let's just truncate the process table and before and then before we start execu executing this package the important thing is I want only one thread to run uh, that is I want a sequential processing as a user so I put max concurrent executables as one and save it and then I run this package so at max only one thread will run in one go so it will execute in a sequential order just that uh, any process can take over it will not be an order which can which can be controlled if had it, uh, the one we did it the other uh, in the other scenario was controlled I mean the precedence of where was controlled here that's not apart from that still we are executing it sequentially from the processor perspective so that's going on let's just see The sequence container can be really useful in a lot of scenarios where uh, you want this parallel processing to occur I mean it's I have had an experience of parallel processing and it has been of really immense use to me so it's really important that you can get, get hang of this uh, this component right so that's complete let's just go and test I mean you all the four scenarios what's the time that we have clocked in here so yeah so what we have done is sequentially is one minute four seconds so user control sequential is still taking longer time so uh, these are the four scenarios that you can actually go with I mean uh, I would what I would suggest is if you want to go sequentially you can go with the system control but at times when you have good amount of uh, a, a strong processor and maybe a very uh, high amount of RAM on your server box you can actually control your parallel processing and you can go more than six threads at a time so you can control it and maybe you can go with a user controlled parallel execution plan so that was uh, something I really wanted to share with you guys now the call is up to you but yeah you should be knowing this aspect it will be really really helpful to you thanks friends that was all thanks a lot